The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. Casey, Mr. Marvin, all week I've been seeing the kids going back to school. Ah, school days, dear old school days. Uh-huh. Education's a wonderful thing, all right. Sure is, Mr. Marvin. I didn't get past the fourth reader, but I learned something awful important since then. What was that, Ethelbert? <laughs> you tell him, Mr. Marvin. Why, Anchor Hawking is the most famous name in class. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of the great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, Graveyard Gertie. Night cold and dark, a road on the outskirts of the city, a dismal road. On one side, it's flanked by dilapidated, grimy houses, billboards and vacant lots strewn with rubbish. On the other side is a cemetery. A familiar, battered-looking car approaches, and as it draws near... I can't figure out that new rattle, Annie. Listen to it. Mm-hmm. I've been listening. But, Casey, this poor old jalopy makes so many strange noises, it's hard to tell. Now, if... this is something new, and it sounds like the battery support. Well, I'm going to pull up here and see if I can locate it. Oh, you picked a fine place to pull up, in front of those cemetery gates. Oh, please. graveyards don't bother me. Well, I don't like them, especially at this hour. It's almost midnight, Casey. <laughs> you see any spooks climbing out of the ground at the stroke of 12, Annie? Give a whistle. Ah, here's what rattles. What? The license plate. There's a bolt already to fall out of it. <laughs> Is that all? Yeah. Say, Annie, open the glove compartment. Will you give me the pliers? The flashlight. Excuse me. There. Yeah, okay. Yeah, here that's you it, go. that's it. Won't take a minute. Uh, midnight. Uh-huh. That's a good thing I stopped when I did. Another mile and this bolt would have fallen out. Hey, Casey. Huh? Something's moving among those tombstones. What? Where? Back there. I see, behind that mausoleum. Yeah, coming this way, it looks like a woman. Hey, it is a woman. Yeah, I suppose so, but she seems to be just floating among those graves, Casey. Floating, Annie. Not she's simply walking very slowly and weakly. Well, That's why the... should any woman be walking in a graveyard at this time of night? Well, how should I know, Annie? Hey, Casey. What? The woman's figure it sank out of sight behind that tombstone. Yeah, so it did. Yeah, it looks as though she went into the ground. You know darn well she didn't, but I'm going to find out what she did. Hey, Casey, don't leave me alone here. Come on with me, then. Into that cemetery? Naturally. Well, okay, but I don't like this. I'll just open the gate. Careful, I don't stumble over one of these footstones. Oh, Casey, I don't like it here. At your age, Annie. Yeah, but... There. There's the tombstone where we saw her. Yeah, and there's something behind it on the ground. A horrible black shadow. Yeah, that's much more than a shadow. That's an old woman. Oh, but... A real woman? Yes, a live one, too. Hey, come here. Yeah. Annie, I think she's fainted. Oh, Casey. Uh, she's terribly old. She's coming, too. What? Who are you? Oh, take it easy, Mother. We saw you fall down in here. We came to help you. Hey, guess I had one of my spells. Ain't so young as he used to be, and sometimes my heart... Uh, the rest is what you need right now. Yeah, we'll, we'll take you home. Home? And see that you get into a warm bed. This is my home here. Huh? This cemetery? Yes, got myself a nice place here. Fine place, eight by four. Okay. It's all paid for, too. I got a deed for it. It's mine. It's a beautiful grave. Uh, <clears throat> well, I hardly think it's your home right now, Mother. It's my real home, because I own it. I come here every day and every night to look at it. Oh, I see. My home. I'll be moving into it soon. Yeah, well, not tonight, you know. All right, now I'll carry you over the car. Annie, open the door, will you? Oh, yeah, sure. There, now I'll put you right here in the back seat, Mother. 
Lie back and relax. Much obliged, young fella. Yeah. You're a nice boy. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome, sir. Now, if you'll tell us where you live, we'll take you home. Live? Oh, yes, the place I rent. Tinkfer, just down the road a piece. All right. You point out the house when we get to it. I will. Will there be somebody there to take care of you? Somebody to... Oh, yes. Roger will take care of me. Oh, he's your son or grandson? No, Roger ain't no relation. He's just a friend. Best friend ever had. When he asked you two to come in and meet Roger. Well, that's fine. When we meet your friend Roger, I'm going to tell him not to let you wander around cemetery this time of night. <laughs> you can tell Roger anything you've got a mind to, young fella. But he won't hear you. Huh? Oh, you mean he's deaf and dumb? No. I mean he's dead. Huh? Dead? That's right. Folks never suspected when they meet him first. You wouldn't if I hadn't told you. I'd never dreamed poor Roger had been dead for 40 years. Been dead? Uh, say, what do you mean? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know. I won't tell you no more now. You'll find out when you meet Roger. <laughs> You'll find out when you meet him. Our story will continue in just a moment. Is that good? Beer right from the bottle. Ah, uh, yes, indeed, Alex. Beer right from the bottle. And that's the only way to serve beer. Beer in glass bottles. For glass and glass alone can bring you beer that's brewery bright. Beer as it's meant to taste. Well, what about this bottle, Tony? It's a new kind of bottle. The Anchor Glass One-Way No Deposit Bottle. You mean I don't have to take it back to the store, mm, eh? No, sir. I don't have to pay any deposit? Not a cent. The Anchor Glass One-Way No Deposit Bottle is so light so compact, so inexpensive to produce that you pay no deposit of any kind. Never bother about empties. When it is empty, dispose of it as you would any other food container. And let's not forget, Tony, that this no deposit container is made of glass. And glass never affects the taste or flavor of beer or ale. No wonder the Anchor Glass one-way bottle is sweeping America. Yes, Alex, for a perfect flavor, demand beer in glass bottles. For extra convenience. Demand your favorite brand in the new Anchor Glass one-way no-deposit bottle. A product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Stop your automobile. Okay. Terrible looking shanty, Casey. Yeah. All right, I'll help you out, Mother. I'm all right, young fella. That ride was nice. Don't get to automobiles very often. I'm going to ride in one again pretty soon when I leave this place I live in and go home. Fine, big black automobile is going to take me, and I'll be wearing a swell black dress and be resting in a box all lined with satin. Ah. <clears throat> we'll uh, take you to your door. Then you're coming in to meet Roger. Uh, well, it's uh, very late. I think we'd better be going. No, no. You've got to come in. I'll go ahead and unlock my door, light a lamp, and <laughs> tell Roger we've got something. Casey, what are we getting into? That, that Roger... It's something the poor old woman imagines, Annie. Her mind doesn't run in very cheerful channels. Huh, to say the least. Casey, she's unlocked three different locks to open that door. Yeah, one of her eccentricities, I guess. New young folks. Got the lamp lit. I told Roger. Come in now. Okay, Mother. <clears throat> Come on, kids. I don't like the looks of that tumble-down shack, Casey, but... Oh, okay. Get in. Get right in. Now we'll shut the door. Hey, your place is nice inside, Mother. I sweep and mop and dust every morning. Oh, you're a wonderful housekeeper. Also got a kitchen. Come and see. Oh, you step. <laughs> the dish cupboards are clean, too. I'll unlock them and show you. You, uh, huh. keep your dishes locked up? I keep everything I can locked up. That's only to stop burglars who don't meet Roger first. Roger? And send them out of this house flippity-split. Uh, <clears throat> you are going to let us meet, uh, Roger? Maybe I shouldn't have told you that Roger's here and that he's dead. But he's no fool. You two won't hurt me. Come back into Mother's room. Now, Roger's there. Where? In that big trunk. In that trunk? 
Stacy, you'll be scared when you see him. I'm warning you, folks was always scared of Roger. He ain't changed none since he's dead. Uh, look here, Mother. What, what, Open what? that trunk and see for yourself. Just lift the lid. Trunk's the one thing in this house that's never locked. Lift the lid. Roger will scare you, but he won't hurt you. Lift the lid. Casey, she's got a dead body in that trunk. <laughs> that's right. I'll see. No, no, Casey, don't. The young woman don't trust me like I trust her. I'll lift the lid and show you what's inside. Here. Good Lord. What a snake. A big snake. It's lifting its head. Oh, come on. Let's get out of this house. I'm right with you, Annie. Oh, no. All right, I'll bust Wait, it. wait, wait. What? I warned you you'd be scared of Roger. I told you Roger's dead. This big snake is Roger. Look at him again. Uh, Annie, the thing is just a... Oh, it's just a stuffed snake. <laughs> That's right, young fella. Oh, we saw it move. Its head rose out of that trunk. His head's on a steel spring, young woman. I had the taxidermist fella fix it that way. You see, when Roger was alive, he traveled in this trunk. When I opened the lid at the end of a trip, he always dipped his head like that and rubbed his throat against my arm. Roger had been my friend and partner 20 years. When he died, I missed him so. I had him stop real lifelike. Roger was your, your partner? I used to be a snake charmer, young man. A uh, snake charmer? Oh, Best see. in the business. I did all the good big tops. But when poor Roger passed away, I lost interest in the profession and dropped out. There never was another python like him. He was a python, huh? Fifteen foot of him, every inch of him, high and lovable. Uh, <clears throat> you look a little pale, young lady. I'm going to fix you a spot of tea. Uh, no, thanks, I... Uh, we must be going oh, now. Oh, you can't do that. Please stay. Roger and me ain't had visitors for an awful long time. Sure, sit down, Annie. We're in no hurry. Now. All right. All right. Now, some snakes ain't sweet. Take cobras, for instance, or copperheads, or rattlers. I could handle them, still can, but I never got to really like them. Mother, you and I are liking that. Oh, me too. Say, I knew we was going to find a lot of things in common. I put the tea kettle on, and then we'll have a nice long talk. Young folks in old Bertie's house again. It almost makes me feel as though the place I live in is my home. You and Miss Williams stayed up half the night with that old lady, huh, Casey? Sure did. We got a big kick out of it, too, Ethelbert. She had so many interesting things to talk about. Old circus days and the gay 90s. And it was a wonderful evening. Outside of Roger. Oh, don't mention him. I'll never get over that shock. A snake. Poor old woman living alone with a stuffed snake. Yeah, and wandering around that cemetery. You know, I found out that people in the neighborhood call her Graveyard Gertie had nothing to live for except the prospect of a decent funeral. You say she's managed to put enough dough away for that? Yeah, skimped and saved a few dollars here and there. Casey sold Burke, our city editor, on the idea of playing uh, old Gertie up in a Sunday feature for which she'll be paid. Paid? Sure, for letting me take pictures and for giving Miss Williams an exclusive interview. How much will your city editor pay her? Well, the tight wad said $100 was his limit. But Casey got him up to $300. Hey, that'll look like a million to the old gal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we're going to call on her with the check tomorrow morning. Well, here we are, Annie. Uh-huh. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and knock at the door while you get your camera and supply case. Okay, Annie. My stuff's all here in the back seat. I'll be with you in a second. Mm-hmm. Williams. Well, she doesn't answer, Casey. Hmm? She must be out. Oh, well, I'll try the door. It's not locked. Well, then she's inside. She wouldn't go away without locking up. Uh-uh. Push it open. Yell again. Yeah, okay. Casey, look. Huh? Hey, somebody's been tearing this place apart. Oh, the bureau drawers are all pulled out and those cabinets are open. Stuff's strewn all over the floor. And Roger's trunk is open. Ooh, that awful head sticking out. Well, never mind the stuffed snake. Where's the old lady? Okay. She's not in this room. Wait, I'll look in the kitchen. Yeah, okay. Well, she's not in here. Annie, these kitchen cupboards have been open, too. Yeah. Look, everything she kept locked has been unlocked, Annie. Nothing broken open. Oh, she wouldn't give up her keys unless... 
Unless... Yeah. That's what I'm afraid of. Oh, Casey. I don't see any blood stains. No sign of a... Wait a minute. Wait, look here on the floor. Yeah, a piece of mud. Yeah, that's clay. Well, don't touch it. It may be a lead for the police. Yes. Yeah, the cops don't like to find things monkeyed with. Annie, go find a phone. Call the cops. Get Logan. Well, Captain Logan's homicide bureau. We have no murder to report. I've got a hunch, Annie. Get Logan. <laughs> Casey, your hunch has wasted a lot of valuable time for me. My guys have searched every inch of this neighborhood, and there isn't a sign of that old woman or her body. What do they go over that cemetery, Logan? She walked in there every night. They've looked behind every tree and tombstone. You had no business to call me in on this. Before the homicide squad can go to work, they have to have a dead body. Yeah, sometimes I think they got one for a captain. <laughs> oh, yeah? Look, Logan, that old woman wouldn't have given up her keys without a scrap, and she was too frail to stand a scrap. Well, there's no evidence there was a scrap. This was a case for the precinct cops and missing persons bureau. I'm going back to headquarters. Okay, smart guy. Go ahead. But my hunch still says this is a murder case, and I'm going to prove it. Yeah, so long, Miss Williams. Goodbye, Captain. Uh, Looks to me as though you've put yourself out on a limb with him, Casey. Uh, How are you going to prove this is a murder? Well, maybe I did talk a little too big. He got me sore. He... Hmm. Piece of mud... Must have come off the shoe of whoever ransacked this place. But how did it get on his shoe? Well, how does anyone get muddy shoes? In the cemetery. A Annie, let me think, will you? Be Old Gertie had so many locks and bars around this place that the neighbors probably figured that she had dough hidden here. So someone in the neighborhood laid for her, huh? Somebody who was familiar with the neighborhood and her habits. He killed her. According to your hunch. Yes. Yeah. Uh, be quiet, okay, Annie. Okay, okay. Took her keys... Hit the body. Place unknown. Huh? Oh, I didn't say anything. Oh. And he came to this shack and searched for the dough that he thought was here using Gertie's keys. And he didn't find what he was looking for in a locked place, so he lifted the lid of that trunk that wasn't locked. And the head of that stuffed snake popped out. Yeah, the burglar reacted, Annie, just like we did when we first saw Roger. Only he got out the door, slammed it behind him, and kept going... Wait a minute. One place it's a cinch that burglar didn't look. And that's inside of Roger's trunk. The burglar thought the snake was a real McCoy and ran out. Annie, let's see. I'm right. Look. Hey, there's a metal box in the bottom of the trunk. Roger's coiled around it. A big cash box with a locked lid. Old Gertie did have money hidden here. If she did. It's in this box. Annie. Yeah? I think I see a way to prove that Gertie was murdered and to get whoever did it. How? Whoever used that old woman's keys still has them. And still wants the dough that he didn't find. Well, I don't see how... Annie, I go can... back to the office and tell him I won't be in for quite a while. Well, what are you going to do? First, I'm going to pay a visit to the sexton of that cemetery down the road. Yes, Mr. Casey, I know old Gertie. She's been a familiar figure around this cemetery. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know she's disappeared, Sexton. Uh, uh, Kramer's the name. Mr. Kramer. Yes, the policeman who searched the grounds told me what had happened. They found her yet? No, no, they yeah. haven't. But they figure she's okay. She just wandered away. From... I sincerely hope they're right. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> my paper was about to publish a story on the old girl. Is there that... Anything that you could tell me, Mr. Kramer? That, uh... I've already told the police all I know, which is really nothing. Uh, well, maybe some of your workmen, uh, the grave diggers, for instance. Maybe they could give me some dope on it. Well, you might talk to them. You'll find most of them working at the northeast end today. Oh, uh, well, I'll look them up and get acquainted. Oh, was there a burial this morning? Three of them. Three? Yes. Why do you ask? Oh, I just wondered how business was. <laughs> Manner of speaking. Uh, you know, I'll tell you a funny one. If a burglar killed that old lady, he didn't find her money. Didn't? I think the money is in a locked metal cash box beneath a big stuffed snake she had. Big stuffed snake? Uh-huh. Well, thanks for your courtesy, Mr. Kramer. I'll go out and talk to your grave digger. <laughs> You fellas have really been swell letting me interrupt your work and telling all you know about old Gertie. Thanks a million. Ah, uh, grave diggers are not such bad fellows when you get to know us, eh, Mr. Casey? Yeah, that's right, Tony. 
sorry I couldn't give you no hints about where to look for the old girl, Mr. Casey. I sure hope she turns up in good health. Yes, yeah, so do I, Pat. Yes, yeah, so do I. I didn't know the old dame, but uh, I'd like her to be okay. Uh, me too, Joe. Me too. Yeah, well, thanks again. I'll be running along, I guess. Oh, uh, since you knew old Gertie, that is all except Joe here, uh, I'll tell you a funny one. <laughs> if a burglar did kill Gertie, which the cops don't believe... He missed the place where I think she kept her dough. He did? Yeah. In a locked metal box beneath a big stuffed snake she has. Stuffed snake? Stuffed a snake, you say? Stuffed snake? Yeah. <laughs> Stuff, Joe. Casey, what makes you think the murderer will come to old Gertie's house tonight? I invited him to come. See, I talked to him today. I see. You talked to him? I think I did. I think he's a guy named Joe. That's identifying him for me. I also think I know where he hid the body, Logan. Huh? Where? I'll tell you. But first, look. First, you've got to agree to follow a plan that I've laid out. Now, is it a deal? All right, Casey, it's a deal. <laughs> big scheme has worked out swell so far, Casey. We've now been enjoying the discomforts of old Gertie's two-before kitchen just four hours. And in the dark. I don't think he'll show up at all. All right. We'll lay for him again tomorrow night. Oh, that's a pleasant prospect. Yeah. Standing in the dark. Yeah. Doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. We can listen to Logan's sparkling conversation. Yeah. Nuts. Casey, what do you suppose is in that box of Gertie's? We'll find out, Annie, when it's open. Well, I'm surprised you didn't have a locksmith open it, Captain Logan. Well, why should I? Hey, shh, quiet, listen. Your key's turning in the lock. Who do you think is using that key, Logan? Shut up. Hey, the door's opening. It's a man. Yeah, he's turned on a flashlight. Now, keep back. He's heading for that trunk. He's opened it. Do you stop, Logan? Put him up, you. you uh, Put him up, I said. Don't shoot, don't shoot. Where did you get that bunch of keys, Joe? Yeah, I... All right, all right. You can run me in for entering this house just now, but that's all you can pin on me. That's all. You think it'll be all when we find old Gertie's body where you buried it? I didn't bury no body. You killed that old woman. No. You killed her and buried her in one of the new graves that were dug yesterday. You dug one of those graves a little deeper last night, put Gertie's body in and covered it to the grave's normal depth. I don't know what you're talking about. You tracked fresh clay into this house last night from the graveyard. Try to prove it was me, mister. Well, I guess there's nothing to do but take him in, Logan. Uh, come on, you. Hey. Uh, wait a minute. He's got the keys, Logan, to that box we haven't opened. We might as well see what's in it. Yeah, that's right. Open it up, Joe. Me? That's what you came here to do. All right, all right. So you got an attempted burglary rap against me. So what? So open that box. Okay, anything to oblige you, copper. And I'll open it up and take out what's inside. Okay, okay. <coughs> what's the matter? A snake's in a box, a live snake. Snake? Yeah, look at my hand, the box of its fangs. Oh, so, Gertie kept a live snake in there, too. Logan, that snake's a copperhead. Copperhead? Oh, they're deadly. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Get me to a doctor, will you? Get me to a doctor, quick. Yeah, we knew the old girl liked snakes, Casey. Hey, for the love of... I didn't know she liked copperheads, though. Hey, if a doctor don't take care of me in a few hours, I'll be dead. Well, that's right. Well, then do something for me. Not until you tell the truth about old Gertie. I told you the truth. Think it over, Joe. In a few minutes, your hand will begin to swell. Hey, the look... poison will be going through your system. Hey, hey, you can't do this to me. You can't. A snake bite has to be treated quickly, or there's not much hope. Tell us about Gertie, Joe. Your hand's beginning to swell, Joe. Tell us about Gertie. Well, look, the it... doc doesn't get to your quick. Tell us about hey, Gertie. All right, all right, I'll tell, I'll tell you if you get a doc. Now talk fast and tell the truth. I killed the old woman. How? I sneaked up behind her and hit her on the head. What grave did you bury her in? Uh, one of the new graves. I'll show you. You'll find her there just like I said. Now get me to a doc. Get me to a doc, yes, will you? Just as soon as we check your story, Joe. Look, that grave is open and we know you've told the truth. Hey, this poison won't wait till you open that grave. I'll be dead by then. Confidentially, Joe, we don't really care. Well, well, you're going to let me die. You're going to let me Come die. Come on, You're going to the cemetery and point out that grave. Let me... And hey, I'll no, take no, your no, picture, no, don't Hey, wait a minute, Casey. I'm not sure, Annie. What is it? Did you and Logan know there was a snake in that box? <laughs> Confidentially, Annie, we put it there. A copperhead? No. Just a harmless hog-nosed snake that we borrowed from the zoo. Doesn't even bite. Well, he had bit that man's hand. I saw the mark. <laughs> well, we had the box rigged so that anybody sticking his hand in it would strike a pair of sharp pointed nails and scratch himself. Oh, oh no. Joe won't die of snake bite. He's going to die in a chair. <laughs> Join 
join the crowd at the Blue Note in just a moment. Here's an interesting experiment. Take a sunburst crystal pitcher, set it down on a fine linen tablecloth, and then ask anyone to guess what this pitcher should cost. Well, guesses would run up to very large sums of money, many, many times as much as this sunburst crystal pitcher actually costs. Yet, believe it or not, you can buy this beautiful two-quart sunburst crystal pitcher for only 50 cents, or slightly more in distant cities. It has the same diamond-like sparkle you see in the most costly hand-cut crystal, the kind of crystal that's handed down for generations as a family heirloom. Yes, here is truly an amazing bargain, a really great value. Now, you'll find this sunburst crystal pitcher and other equally great sunburst crystal values at any retail store selling household glass. Ask for sunburst crystal by name. You'll recognize the traditional sunburst pattern immediately. Sunburst crystal is a product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Cops found that poor old woman's body just as that guy Joe said, huh? Can That's you... right, Ethelbert. Which means that Joe's all washed up. What was in that box before you put the harmless snake in it, Casey? All of old Gertie's wealth. Huh? Yep. An old photograph of Roger when he was alive, the deed to Gertie's burial plot, and an undertaker's receipt for the funeral that she'd paid for in advance, and a $10 bill. Gee. And she's getting that proper funeral with trimmings. The $300 check that we weren't able to give her is buying her a nice monument. Well, she'd like that. Yes, yeah, she would. Say, Casey, what's going to be done with Roger, that 15-foot python in the trunk? Oh, say, I'm glad you mentioned that, Ethelbert. Yeah, we almost forgot. Gertie made a will the day after we met her, which leaves Roger, trunk and all, to Annie and me. What are you going to do with him? See, your bartender... Hmm? Is there a guy around here by the name of Ethelbert Gibson? Oh, yeah, that's me. What's on your mind? I'm from the express company. I got a big trunk outside for you. Where do you want me to put it? Come on, Casey. I uh, think we'd better go. Yeah, so long, pal. So huh? Long. Wait, you mean a trunk? Well, what am I going to do with... See, you can't do this to me! Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass, Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures, all products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Photographer is directed by John Deets. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist, and Gertie was played by Abby Lewis. This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. Thursday night on CBS is the biggest show in town. So stay tuned for exciting dramatizations on Reader's Digest Radio Edition, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.